Hello, everyone. I'm Evan Graves. Um, I help coordinate the Fellows Program here at the Yale Institute of Sacred Music. We are an interdisciplinary graduate center at Yale for the study and practice of sacred music, worship, and the related arts. And this interview today is a continuation of our grassroots and socially distant Zoom interview series, uh, which we're calling Reflections from Quarantine. Today, I'm very happy to be with my colleague, uh, Professor Sumarsam, who is an ISM fellow for the current academic year. He is also the Winslow Kaplan Professor of Music at Wesleyan University and a specialist and performer in Wayang Shadow Puppetry of Indonesia. Welcome, Professor Sumarsam. Thank you, Evan. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's great to be with you. Um, in case you don't know, the ISM Fellows Program, now in its 10th year, is a program here at the Institute of Sacred Music, meant to diversify the work being done in sacred music, worship, and the related arts. And scholars such as Professor Sumarsam from around the world apply to this program with an interdisciplinary project that they complete in the midst of the ISM uh, environment. Um, so, Professor Sumarsam, we'd just like to start off by asking you to talk a little bit about um, your journey as a scholar and performer in Wayang and the performing arts of Indonesia and, and how that path led you to become a fellow at the ISM and a professor at Wesley. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, first, let me say I'm humbled and honored to be one of the Yale ISM fellows. It is unfortunate that today's situation has stopped me from getting together with my colleagues. It is also unfortunate that the COVID-19 has slowed down my research and writing, not only because of my hearing breaking news almost daily, but also periodically, I have to check the well-being of my family in Indonesia. I have two older sisters. They are in their 80s, eight zeros. They live in a small village in East Java, the village where I was born and growing up. So far, my sisters and their families are doing well. So I just revealed to you that I was born in and growing up in a small village. My late father was a farmer and a cow car driver. On the later in his life, he became the chief of the village. For me, as you imagine, I truly have had a long journey from being a village boy to becoming a teacher at Wesleyan and fellow at ISM. Perhaps because my humble background, presently in my research, I am interested more and more in how people commoners use performing art and life of passage rituals for practicing their religion in their everyday lives. From that angle, I'm looking at the early existence of performing art during the Hindu Javanese period at around 9th, 10th century then proceed to the period of Islamized Java from around the 15th century onward. I can give you uh, an illustration, two illustrations, which might have relevancy to today's situation. The first one is Wayang Sato Puppet Play, and the second is a prayer or incantation through sung poetry. Well, thank you. It's certainly been a, 
an exciting journey that's brought you here to us at the ISM. Um, perhaps you could tell the audience a little bit about um, Wayang shadow puppetry, which I know is at the center of your research, and um, some of the different ways that you found uh, over, over history. This is kind of this performing art has expressed some of the different um, religious perspectives found in Indonesia today. All right. Okay. I, I have a slideshow to show here. Yes, there's a slide. Um, the first uh, photo is a, a Wayang. Uh, stage with a complete set of gamelan accompaniments and uh, is, you can see in the middle is a single puppeteer moving the puppets, uh, sitting down cross-legged, telling story, uh, making puppets to talk, singing mood songs and cueing musicians what to play and when to stop. So the question is, how does the puppeteer structure a Wayang story? Um, following the study by uh, Professor Alton Becker of University of Michigan, I would say that each Wayang story is presented according to the coexistence of four sociological, cosmological, and natural elements. So I, you can see the first, uh, the next slide. Uh, demons. Uh, uh, we can consider demon as sensual element of raw na nature. And the second one, uh, the prince and princesses. Uh, you can consider that as a, a representing feudal elements of traditional Java. And the third, uh, ancient gods and goddesses as cosmological elements of power. And the fourth, uh, clowns as modern pragmatic elements of personal survival. Uh, thank you for explaining that, Professor Samarsam. I, I believe you have an actual um, Wayang Kuli puppet there that you're going to do a quick demonstration with, so we'd love to see that. Yeah. Okay, but I hope this works. I don't have a real screen, but uh, let me see. Uh, I think I was talking about the demon. Let me see it. It's, it's a, can you see it there? Yes. Yeah, this is a demon. And uh, the prince, yeah, you can see it, yeah. And uh, I don't have a, a, a god, but I have a, a clown. So each of these uh, elements of uh, characters, of course, uh, will move differently and according to what the character is. Uh, Three percent. So, if you think of uh, 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 the prince, the prince probably will walk very slowly like that. But the demons, of course, says uh, raw nature is doing very fast like this. Or, do the samba so like that, and so on and so forth. So the challenge from the puppeteer, of course, is when the demon will have to encounter uh, the prince. The prince will just kind of bring the fairies to the light and the demon will move. Oh, and the tune can do like that. <laughs> okay. Well, it's fantastic. Thank you for that little demonstration there. And, um, you know, I'm sure as our, our, uh, our viewers can imagine a, a Wayang Kulit performance, a shadow puppet performance like this um, is used to playing out in a very live context, like the images you just showed us with a 
with a puppeteer and a gamelan orchestra and an audience as well. So um, what is it, how, how are these performances taking place in our current um, situation with COVID-19 being such a, a, a dangerous force in the world today? How are, how are musicians used to this live context? How are they performing? Well, that's the problem. <laughs> uh, uh, so uh, I, have been, I have been following closely actually uh, in what way the uh, Kamalan musicians and puppeteers uh, have responded to this today's situations. Uh, there's no question that the performers are in a very typical circumstances, financially and musically, they cannot play since all the performances have been canceled. I'm assuming that uh, popular puppeteers would have enough money to live from their saving. But average puppeteers and especially musicians, who actually is pretty much a seasonal musicians, uh, they have a hard time to uh, uh, to live because they don't have income. Uh, uh, there are uh, some networking that I'm involved in where actually we contribute some money so uh, we uh, give it to them uh, as, uh, to help them out to, to live. Mm. Um, the so if there is no performances, uh, I think that there's a number of puppeteers uh, come up with uh, uh, with uh, solutions. Uh, it's not a good solution, I guess, because it was only experiment things to do. They perform uh, the online by himself. So he tells stories, sings, uh, singing a gamelan from his own mouth and playing one instrument, things like that. So, and there's also, uh, usually in the, uh, he doing uh, that kind of experiment on a very short time, an hour, a couple hours. So that's what they can do now. One of them actually used a recorded accompaniment, it recorded music to accompany in the play. So, uh, and one of this uh, puppeteer actually performed a story specially to be presented to word of the uh, 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 calamity, uh, the word of evil spirit. Um, and uh, there is another interesting uh, response to this uh, uh, situation. A few musicians singing a song, not as a singing, but as an incantation, as a prayer. And I would like to sing two songs on uh, for on that. So I think we have a trans yes, translation. I have a, I have a translation here. Ano kitung rumak sa hengwangi tako hayu luputo ing loro. Luputo pilahi kape Jim setan datan purun Panaluhan tan ono wani Miwa Pangawe Allah Hunaning Wong Lupo Kerni Atamah 
ante el maling ado dan ono ngara mereng kami kuno duduk pan serno singga singga kolo singga Tan suminga turko kolo sumingke sing asirah sing asuku sing atan kasat moto. Sing atengga, sing awulu, sing apau. Kabeh podo suming kiro. Ing teleng ing jolo. Nidi Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much for those two songs. And uh, I'm sure the positive feelings from those songs will hopefully spread far and wide over the internet. Um, so I'd like to thank you, Professor Marsam, for the, for the songs and for your, your wonderful interview today. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, it was a pleasure. And thank you to everyone uh, for listening in from the internet. Uh, there will be more of these uh, Zoom style interviews coming out soon. So please watch for those at ism.yale.edu. Um, and in the meantime, we wish everyone good health, stay safe, and look out for more uh, interviews from us. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.